Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege of studying your Torah, your word. It's life into our spirit. It's medicine into our flesh. Tonight, Lord, I pray that each person who's listening, you know where they are at in their walk. And I ask that, that Lord, you will be glorified tonight and you will cause us to say something that would cause each listener to move forward, advance, or provoke them to study, to go deeper in you. Thank you for the anointing. Lord, I'm Pastor Ken as he ministers tonight in the name of Yeshua. Amen. Amen. Mm. Once again, thank you for being part of the Torah portions. Mm. We believe that they really are mm. the key. If you'll study mm. to do them, yes. they're a key to discipleship. And yes. that's the way we kind of approach it. So tonight, yeah. the fifth Torah portion, we're in Hi Sarah or the life of Sarah. Um, hopefully you'll follow along in the notes mm. tonight and you've already read the Torah portion. If you yeah. haven't, of course, you have until the end of Shabbat to really the, we start on Monday or, right. or Sunday and the first day of the week and you work your way through. It gives you time to not only do the Torah portions, but do your Bible reading. Yeah. All, you know, just exactly. add this to your Bible reading. So let's look at some Torah portion mm. highlights. Sarah's going to die and Abraham's mm. going to honor her life. Um, he's going to eulogize her, speak good about her. And then he um, he's going to negotiate with a guy who's a Hittite, Ephron, um, yeah. to buy a cave and this field of Machpelah. We'll look at that a little later. Um, and then after he makes that purchase, um, Abraham sends his trusted servant to go to his former homeland, okay. Sarah's former homeland as well, because they are related. And he's sending this servant to find a wife for his son. He, mm -hmm. he knows he has a promise now of legacy. Um, of he has his own child that came, you know, from his loins, and now okay. He needs a wife. Yeah. And he says, I don't want him to take a wife from the Canaanites where I'm dwelling. Alone. Um, I don't want him to have that. I want him to have the, a woman that has the same spirit yeah. as his mom. Amen. Where, you know, basically that's where, where it's going. Okay. So now the servant, he's going to meet a special girl who is the appointed wife for Isaac. And he's going to meet her by a well, sort mm -hmm. of like, you know, John chapter four, where there's a woman yeah. at Jacob's well. It, it it ties into that she fulfills the, and, and remember the woman at the well in john 4 is talking about marriage you right. know she was talking exactly. about marriage and exactly you know he finds his maybe you guys or girls <laughs> need to be by a well if you're there single you find that well yeah. Yeah. okay so she's going to fulfill his prayer points um he prays to god to give him a sign and and this girl is going to fulfill it um, the servant's prayer is further confirmed when he finds out this girl is none other than Rebecca, who we learned about in the genealogies, and she's a close relative um, right. to Abraham and Sarah. So he gets there after some negotiating with Laban. Rebecca goes with the servant to meet her prince Isaac, and I believe this is the real Cinderella story. Yeah, and this is a real, yeah. and we, we might talk about that on Shabbat. Yeah. So she becomes the wife of Isaac. She proceeds to live in the tent of Sarah. Um, mm -hmm. He loves Rebecca. Um, and then um, Abraham, after this happens, uh, he marries this woman named Keturah. Mm -hmm. He has other children. Um, he doesn't give the inheritance to them. Notably, right. he gives them gifts. All right. that he has, he gives to Isaac. Right. Um, and then he dies at 175 and very interesting um thing to, to remember and realize is because it's prophetic ishmael and isaac are both honoring their father yeah at his death yeah and i believe that is really showing us that there will be one day and yes. ishmael and isaac the the natural firstborn the spiritual yeah. firstborn both honoring father abraham yeah. and i believe that's prophetic Amen. of that and i believe we need to we have the scripture to stand on and mm -hmm. some more, which we'll talk about tonight later mm -hmm. on. They bury him at the same place. He buys to, uh, the, uh, from, from uh, Ephraim, the cave of Machpelah. God blesses, the Bible says, God blesses Isaac after the, the death of Abraham. And he moves to a place called Bear Lahar. The high row. It's yeah. hard for me to say. Yeah. It's basically the well of the one who sees. Um, and, 
it's we'll look at that place because it's a very special mm -hmm. place that that people have encounters with God. Go um, now, Ishmael's genealogy at the end of the Torah portion is recounted. It's not the first time. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's many times Ishmael's genealogy is mentioned and the 12 princes and where they're going to live. And he dies at 137. So let's tonight, let's work backwards in the Torah portion for now. Okay. And let's look at Ishmael for a little bit. All right. Ishmael means um, God will hear or or. It, if you want to turn it around, it's he's going to hear God. Um, El and Shema is the mm. two words, you know, God and hear. So Genesis 25, 18 says, Then they dwell from Havilah to Sur, which is east of Egypt. As you go towards Assyria, over against all his brothers, he fell. Okay. Mm. Very interesting scripture. That is an accurate translation that okay so where is ishmael's descendants dwelling they're dwelling in a place called from havilah havilah mm -hmm. to Shur, and it's and and all these different points are mentioned east of egypt going towards assyria and then very strangely he falls yeah some translations will say he died there or dwelled there but in the hebrew it is the word for fell Okay. okay, so it's very specific there. So there's positive, and then there's something maybe not so positive. Mm -hmm. So um, you see Is Ishmael has dwellings that connect east to Egypt and towards Assyria. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to dig it, dig this out and look at Ishmael. So you know, I read, gave you that scripture again, so just so you can see it. Where did they live? Mm -hmm. Where did they live? So it gives you these markers. Let's look at what these markers Habala, which means a circle, mm. Shur, which means a wall, Egypt, which means double straits, mm. Assyria could be a step, and literally comes from the word Asher, where we get the word Asher or happy, yeah, or um, successful. Mm -hmm. uh, interesting, and it says he fell. Mm. He fell. Yeah, it was just kind of okay. So Habala really mean okay so Havilah from from h223 means a circle circular the first mention of Havilah is so powerful mm. because it's pointing you right back to the garden of eden mm. because at the garden of eden there's a river the, river, the yeah. first river mentioned is sur is a is uh is surrounding the land right. of the circle or Havilah. so mm -hmm. even the word for surround could be circle mm -hmm. so it's almost like it circles the circle and it's the first river and he's some reason that's his dwelling havila mm -hmm. look what it says more about havila the name of the first is Pishon. That is which compasseth the whole land of Havilah, which there is gold. So it's telling you something. Okay. His dwellings go back to where the first river is of the Garden of Eden. Mm -hmm. It's where there's this circling of this. The river is circling. The land is, the land is a circle, if you will. And then it tells you there's gold. Yeah. Now, the understanding of that gold is the gold is not necessarily, it probably is both. It's it's not necessarily physical gold, but the gold is a prophecy of a people who yeah. will be good gold. Mm. Okay, okay, and we'll see more about that. So Paisan, the first river. So he's once he's dwelling at a place where the, the river of God that came from Eden increase Python is increased water pouring for it's an overflowing place right it's might be telling us something about the root word about ishmael why is he is he wanting to be blessed is he wanting to be mm -hmm. where there's this water there's overflow if you will the root word of Python means to spread um to, to act proudly to grow up to be fat to spread yourselves, to be scattered, to spring about. So it, it's not, it's a, it's a, so, and then it says Havilah has gold. So he's mm -hmm. going to a place of gold, prophesying of gold, physical gold, spiritual gold. Gold can be, um, it's something we know is found in the tabernacle, yeah. you know, has a lot to do with the glory of God that, right. they, you know, so Genesis 2, 11 and 12. Now, if you read to, it together, Read the two the, verses that explain this Havilah. The name of the first is Pison, that is, which compasseth the whole land of Havilah, 
where there is gold and the gold of that land is good and there is beldum and onyx stone. So remember, the Torah doesn't give you mm -hmm. any unnecessary information. So if it's telling you that his dwelling is from Havilah, starting at Havilah, going to Shur, then going to e east of Egypt to Assyria, what do we find out there? That in the, the first mention of Havilah, it's, it's a place of gold and the, and the gold is good. It's mm -hmm. tov. And then there's these other elements, Bed yeah. Bedlam and Onyx Stone. Yeah. Interesting, mm -hmm. good gold, you have the tabernacle elements, mm -hmm. menorah, the ark, the mercy seat, the incense altar. What are they all made of? Yeah. Gold, right? Gold. Bedlam is, a the, the, it, according to Numbers 11, 7, it's manna good. looked like the yeah. Bedlam. So that's telling you something. Even first mentions of this Havilah is mm. tied to gold, manna, manna. the onyx yes. is the stones where the high priests were inscribed with the, the names of the 12 tribes. Mm -hmm. So all he's around all this. It, yeah. And then sure, I'm not going to dig this out tonight because it's, it's too much. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you a chance to start looking at the word sure, which means wall, because there's positive and negative, mm. you know, just like every other Hebrew word. Right, right. Um, and, and it's something you could definitely spend, all, all, you can go down a rabbit hole and never come back. I'll just tell you that. Okay, Genesis 16, 7. And the angel of the Lord found her by the fountain of water in the wilderness, by the fountain in the way to sure. So now this, yeah. who is this? Hagar. This is Hagar. This is mm. Ishmael's mom. So mm. here we see that there's a fountain of water and it's mentioned twice right in the wilderness there's water in the wilderness sounds a lot like israel that had a right. water in the wilderness right we have water in the wilderness you, right. you know in the desert there's water yeah because yeshua is our water our right water. okay yeah but it's telling you that in the way to sure there's also water there mm -hmm. so here he's dwelling he's dwelling from Havilah to sure the first men, the first mention um, of Havilah is um, in about the rivers, but now the first mention of Shur has to do with the fountain. Yeah. So this is where he's dwelling. So Hagar has an encounter with an angel in the way or path to Shur, mm -hmm. where there's a fountain or a spring of water. So she finds a fountain of water in the wilderness. I just want to encourage you. We have no reason to ever be dry spiritually. That's right. When you have Yeshua, yeah. he's the living water. Yes. And even if the whole world is a desert, right. he's our fountain of living he's water in the wilderness. Yes. And yes. I just want to remind you that. I think we, you know, um, and, and he's faithful like that. Yeah. So remember, Israel had a fountain of water in the wilderness and it came from a rock. Okay. The word for fountain is ayin. It could be, it's also your eye. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So now Exodus 1522. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea and they went out into the wilderness of Shur and they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. Is it now this is this is this is before Hagar. So I mean excuse me, this after, is after Hagar. Yeah. So they had to know this story. Yeah. Of Hagar finding where a fountain in the wilderness. Right on the way to shore yeah, right yeah and here there's no water they should be looking prophetically they should be right. knowing okay right we've seen this before hagar went through this mm -hmm. and there was water right and we know later they're going to get the water yeah exactly but i think this is like a, a uh it's like showing us something about sure the land yeah okay uh, israel's journey hagar's journey maybe they're connected yeah because there's other parts of Hagar's journey, the way she was treated badly, the same words to use how she was a, kind of treated badly by Sarah is the same words that Egypt used against Israel. Right. They're, they're, and now we find this sure mm -hmm. connection. So perhaps Israel's journey in the wilderness was in some way mirroring, mirroring Hagar's journey as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly. Now, this could be really powerful if we start tying in some of the new scripture New Testament scriptures would talk about the the one from above is Sarah, the one from below is it's Hagar. Hagar. Yeah. You start tying that in. You, you, it's not one or the other. It's a it's a mirror. Mm. You know. Okay. Anyway, from our text, we from but from our text we see on the way to sure mm -hmm. Hagar found found water. So Ishmael, where he's living, is gold. 
it, I mean, he had the, it's by the, the rivers of Eden, and now there's a fountain. Yeah. Okay, Genesis 25, 18, again, that's the same scripture. They dwell from Havilah to Shur. East of Egypt, as you go towards Assyria. So now let's look, where is the first mention of Assyria? Mm -hmm. It just so happens to be back in the Garden of Eden. Yeah. You cannot make this up. And the name of the third river is Hedekel. That is it, which goes toward the east of Assyria. And the fourth river is Euphrates. So he's dwelling, have a lot to sure. Right. East of Egypt, as you go towards Assyria. And now the third river, the Hidekel, which is a yeah. amazing river, the third with three symbolized resurrection, fruitfulness. Right. It's tied to Assyria. And this is, and, and Assyria actually means a step or in the sense of being successful. Mm. Now, Assyria, now think about this. Assyria is also the nation that disbanded and, yeah. dis and scattered the Northern Kingdom to be completely exiled and cut off from their land. They lost their identity among the nations. So, and Egypt is not a good, so, but he's connected to, he's connected to Egypt. He's connected to Assyria. Assyria. He's connected back to the Garden of Eden. The Hittakel means active, vehement, rapid. Mm. I mean, these are, the, the Hittakel is a powerful river. Yeah. And it's going by Assyria. Where, so why is the Torah portion, this is what I'm thinking of myself. I'll just throw it out you. <laughs> Why is the Torah portion pointing Ishmael and his descendants as to their dwelling places being connected to the Garden of Eden? Is this somehow a prophecy? Mm -hmm. Is this somehow saying one day Ishmael, the sons of Israel, yeah. the children of Israel, they're going back to the Garden as well? Yeah, yeah. That I don't know. I'm just saying it. The Torah is definitely pointing us back to the Garden with where he dwells. Yeah. Egypt, of course, means double straits. Um, I, I thought this was interesting. Egypt, in the sense of a limit, Egypt wants to put a limit on you. Yeah. And I was like, that's the world. Yeah. God yeah. doesn't want to put the limits on us. Mm -hmm. He wants us, to, you know, he wants to, with God, nothing shall be impossible. Amen. Amen. Egypt is always putting you in straits. It's always putting you in tribulation. Mm -hmm. And I just thought that was interesting. The root word of Egypt means to hem you in, mm. to seed you. You know, that, you know, I think this is, it's like Egypt hems you in and besieges you. And Assyria apparently is a step possibly to success or maybe Assyria is a step to a new beginning yeah. I don't know so anyway Ishmael is right in the middle somehow he's enjoying the gold yeah. he's enjoying the rapid increase of the of, of the first river the and the overflow uh, and it's all because of where they're dwelling they're yeah. dwelling near in the, the Garden of Eden they're going dwelling where, near all these places yeah. um that is tapping into gold and mm -hmm. water so, mm -hmm. but there's this anomaly. This at the end of the the book, uh, the last thing it says. Don't forget. I said, don't forget. It's Ishmael's descendants somehow are gonna fall. Yeah. And maybe they have yeah. to come to the end of their self. Right. Maybe they have to not put their trust in the land, the land, the earthly yeah. success. Yeah. You know. Okay. So there's also interesting. There's another place. Hagar has an encounter with the God who sees. And shows her another well. It's a different word for well. In the Hebrew, there's two words for well. Bear and ayin. We looked at the first one. But here, it's the word bear. Mm. It's 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 an equivalent expression, but it's not exact. It's just letting you know it's a type of fountain. It's a type of well. She So she's two, two encounters. Right, right. Two wells, if you will. Fountains, right? And... When she goes to this la this one, um, there's this well that she goes to, and the the angel says, you know, he reaffirms the the, the promise. Ishmael's not going to die. Right. He's going to be a great people. He's going to have you know twelve princes, and somehow this place is so powerful. This place mm -hmm. is so important. That our Torah portion says when Isaac is mm -hmm. going to meet Rebecca, she's, yeah. she's leaving Laban's house. She sees him who, who had been, he had just been at this place. Yeah. And he was meditating in the yeah. field. What And the name of the place is Bear Lahai Roy. I know it's like the, the place that God sees or the mm -hmm. place where the, the God who sees me, it's something prophetic about this place. Yeah. Hagar's connected there. Um, now, Ishmael's connected there. Rebecca Isaac, and Isaac, yeah. you notice it. 
There's yeah. something about this. Yes, and I yes. believe there's more connection to Isaac and Ishmael yeah. than we thought. Yeah. They, the, I, and, and in fact, you read some of the Jewish com, com, commentaries, they say that, that Ishmael repented and, and they were they were getting along. Yeah. They, 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 well, they were they were obviously living they near were living so that, close to each other. Yeah. For some reason, Abraham chooses to keep going back to the place where Hagar was. Yeah. We don't know for sure why. Is Isaac is dwell is is going there as well. In fact, at the end of the Torah portion, Isaac is going to choose to live at this place. Right. Exactly. So he's like, I'm I, I, I'm not just meditating here. God, this is a this is a God encounter here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now let's look Genesis Genesis twenty five eleven. After Abraham's death, God blessed Isaac his son, and Isaac lived near Beer Laharoi. Now these are the genealogies of Ishmael, Abraham's son, whom Hagar Sarah's Egyptian slave bore girl bore to Abraham. These are the names of the sons of Ishmael by their names according to their descendants. Ishmael's firstborn, Nabathoth, then Kedar, Abiel, Mibisam, <laughs> uh, Mishmam, Duma, and Masa, Hadad, Tima, Jeter, Naphish, and Kedem. These are all Ishmael's sons, and these are their names by their unwalled and walled settlements, 12 princesses, according to their clans. These are, are the years of Ishmael's life, 137 years. He breathed his last, died, and was gathered to his peoples. Then they dwelled from Havilah to Shear, which is east of Egypt, as you go towards Assyria, over against all his brothers, he fell. Okay, so the firstborn of Ishmael yeah. is Naboth. Yeah. And, uh, and they're called the Nabataeans. You can, you can start looking that stuff up. Mm -hmm. You're going to see their capital is Petra. By the mm -hmm. way, this is also Esau's territory. Yeah. So there's a connection there. Are we going to Petra? <laughs> yes, we are. So Lord those willing, of you who are yeah. coming with us to Israel, we're going over to Petra. It's beautiful. Look what his name means, fruitfulness. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. The second born, Kedar. His name is Dusky. Uh, could mean Dusky. Okay. Mm -hmm. So look at what Esau does. He marries the, the sister. sister. Yeah. This is how close the real families are. Yeah. He marries the sister of the firstborn of Ishmael. Look in Genesis 28, 9. Then went Esau unto Ishmael and took unto the wives, which he had Mahalath, the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son, the sister of Nabahoth, to be his wife. So the firstborn sister, yeah. Esau marries. marries. And we yeah. never probably saw that connection. Right. right. So, okay. So. Ishmael also married an Egyptian given to him by his mother, Hagar, who's an Egyptian. So Ishmael marries an Egyptian. Esau marries an Ishmaelite. Esau's grandson, Amalek, has both Egyptian, Assyrian, and Abraham's bloodline. Yeah, so you're showing all of the connections. Now, if you, I believe that you look at Isaiah, I think it might be Isaiah... 16 or 20 one of those it's in isaiah where it says there's going to be a highway between yes, these yes. three places yes and just so happens amalek has all three places in his bloodline mm. it's just interesting mm. you know you okay so isaiah 60 has a prophecy specifically about this the firstborn of, of ishmael nabea Okay, so look at Isaiah 63 through 7. Nations will come to your light, kings to the brilliance of your rising. Lift up your eyes and look all around. They all gather. They come to you. Your sons will come from afar away. Your daughters carried on the hip. Then you will see and be radiant, and your heart will throb and swell with joy. For the abundance of the sea will be turned over to you. The wealth of nations will come to you. A multitude of camels will cover you. Young camels of Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba will come. They will bring gold and frankincense and proclaim the praises of Adonai. All Keter's second-born of Ishmael flocks will be gathered to you. Ne Naboth's rams will minister to you. They will go up with favor on my altar, and I will beautify my glorious house. Now, until I studied this out, mm -hmm. I never realized it. And if you look at those other nations like Midian and Ephah and Sheba, mm -hmm. they all came from connected to abraham through his concubines yes, yes. okay so okay so now and Midian is going to be yeah, moses so, right his his yes, wife yeah. yes so yeah and but Jethro. they came but they came, came from, from abraham yeah. and i believe it's keturah mm -hmm. uh, okay so now you can't make this stuff up mm. we never realized that isaiah 60 is telling us we always have rise shine their lights down we never understood that 
Ishmael's, this is a prophecy. Ishmael's, mm -hmm. the sons of Ishmael are coming yes. to the house of the Lord. Yes, amen. Okay, they're, amen. they're, they're gonna offer offerings yes. and it's like they're preceding. Okay, mm -hmm. so the first one of Ishmael is coming home to Adonai. He's a, he is offering on the altar a ram, which is usually a shalom offering that will be accepted. He's, he's saying there's wholeness. Uh, the second borscht is should yes. be born. I'm sorry about the typo. Is a gathering his flocks to Israel. Yes. Okay. As the firstborn, remember, as the firstborn goes the rest of the sons of Ishmael. Yes. The Hebrew understanding. So remember, the firstborn and the secondborn are both set an example there. Right. The Hebrew understanding of the firstborn is that they set the example and to and they model for the rest of the family the will and the ways of mom and dad. They have double responsibility. Mm -hmm. So we have a prophecy of Isaiah declaring the sons who were far away, like Ishmael, coming home to Father Abram and even to the future third temple. Mm. It's Isaiah 60. Now, mm. let's go That's back cool. to the Torah portion and see how Abraham honors his wife at her death by speaking well of her and by giving her a proper burial and mourning over her. A 30-day mourning is the standard, mm -hmm. right? We know that. But it includes a seven-day heavy, heavy mourning, mourning period at the beginning. And then every year, there should be a time of remembrance. Mm -hmm. And this is healthy. This is, yes, but this yes. is Torah. This is Torah. But let me show you something uh, that we found from the Shadows of Messiah book about what they say the Talmud says mm. about um, the first and second born of, of Ishmael. It says the Talmud explains that this prophecy, he's talking about Isaiah 60, applies to the Messianic age when the Gentiles will be self-made proselytes to Judaism mm. because the Gentiles of the Messianic kingdom will all be Torah observant, their animals will make richly accepted sacrifices since they will forsake their pagan practices. It will no longer be necessary to disqualify their animals. And so the flocks of Kedar will be acceptable. The Lord will receive their burnt offerings and sacrifices. The Talmud offers Zephaniah 3, 9 as proof text that the Gentiles of the Messianic Anna era will adopt all practices of god's torah so we'll stop there i can't answer questions right now but you know, brother ray if you can save it to the end we'll we'll we'll, we'll take care of that if, okay so let's read about sarah's wife now sarah's life was 127 years the years of sarah's life sarah died in kareth arba that is hebron in the land of canaan abraham came to mourn for sarah and he to weep over her Afterward, Abraham buried Sarah, his wife, in the cave of the fields of Machpelah, next to Mamre, that is Hebron, in the land of Canaan. So the field and the cave that was in it were handed over to Abraham as a gravesite from the sons of Heth. So we're going to learn about this place, the mm -hmm. cave of Machpelah. Machpelah has a field attached. Mm -hmm. It's in Hebron. Um, so Abraham is living as a foreigner in the land God promised him. He's a sojourner, but he doesn't own at this point. He, even though yeah. God said, this is your land, he doesn't own it. He's living among the Canaanites, the Hittites. Mm -hmm. He lives in two worlds, the upper yeah. and the lower world. Mm -hmm. He lived in the kingdom of heaven and he lived in the kingdom of the earth. And we've got to understand we do the same. Do the You've same. got to learn how to pivot, if you will, yeah. between heaven and earth. And That's earth. why Amen. we pray Amen. the Lord's prayer. You know, Amen. your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. So the transaction though, and this is this is in the writings you know, of, the, of the Hebrews, the transaction of this property is one of the proofs that Israel is the legitimate and rightful owner of record. Mm -hmm. So this three times in the, in the Torah, there was per property purchased. One was David when he purchased the temple site. And this one um, is another one. And there's one other time. But so it, they are cited as this is why mm -hmm. Israel has the right. They actually have the title deed. He paid for it. Right. And, and really, in a sense, he didn't have to. Right. It, I mean, the land was given to him. Yeah. But he did. Okay. Yeah. What to is, secure it. Yeah. He knew what was going to happen. But he knew what he was dealing with. Yes. And he had, yes. to, he had to do it. it. It didn't matter what the price was. Exactly. He paid it. Because exactly. actually... He, the guy totally did a little switcheroo around yeah. Abraham and charged him a hundred times more. When it says 400 shekels, it was actually 400. And each shekel was the, the what he wanted was not the regular shekel. At the last minute, he wanted the, the one that's a, a hundred times more. Yeah. So he ends up paying a million dollars basically right. for this. Uh, anyway, it didn't matter. Kareth Arba, what does it mean? It's mm. a compound word meaning a fourfold city. I want you to just get that in your mind. Mm -hmm. Just kind of think 
could this mean something? Could this point to something? A four-fold city. Mm -hmm. Just think about that. Okay. Kurat Arba is one of the cities of refuge that Joshua. So in Joshua 27, we don't have to read there, but you can okay. see that Kirat Arba, it's in Hebron, it's in the mountain of Judah, and it's a city of refuge. Refuge, yeah, exactly. So the murderer could flee there if he didn't do it on purpose and right. find refuge. Okay. It, so here's why I want you to think about that fourfold city. Mm. Revelation 21, 16, the city is laid out as a square, its length being the same as its width. And he measured the city with his rod, 12,000 stata, about 1,400 miles. Its length and width and height are equal. I'm just thinking about the, the fourfold. Yeah. And could this kind of connect? There's four sides, four up, you know, all, all the fourfold. I mean, this is very interesting. Four, 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 four. Okay. So the cave of Makpala means double or double portion. Mm. And remember, don't ever forget that the cave is attached to a field. You cannot buy just the cave because the the it's attached. It's right. not separate. Right. So the right. field and the cave are one, if you will. So in mm -hmm. ancient tradition, this place is believed to be the burial place of Adam and Eve. All the patriarchs, they will be buried right. at this place, Makpala. It's also believed by tradition to be the closest entrance back to the Garden of Eden. Now, just think about this being that fourfold, yeah. the, the garden, the New Jerusalem, mm -hmm. and all souls will eventually believe to, that they go back to this place. There's something about this place. Mm -hmm. Matthew 8, 13, 44. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in the field, which a man found and hid. Because of his joy, he goes out and sells all that he has and buys that field. And it, this kind of could tie into Abraham because there's treasure yeah. and you have to buy the whole field. And Abraham bought the whole field to get the treasure. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that he wanted the field, he wanted the cave. Yeah. Okay, so Machpelah means a fold. It means, uh, uh, the root word means to fold together, to repeat or to double, mm -hmm. okay? Now, who's buried there? Doubles, fourfold. Adam and Eve, Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebecca, Jacob and Leah. Mm. So both Kirith Arba and Mekla seem to point to a doubling and the number mm. four. Just interesting, especially as we're in the year 57, 84. Yeah, the door. Now, you know, yeah. it, it, you just, just see the four sides yeah, of, of the, the four city, side, yeah. the four sides of a field. Okay, now look. Um, so we know, that, so we already read this. So we're going to skip this for time today because Isaac, then Isaac and Israel, they buried him. In when he cave, dies, they Abraham, they're there yeah. and they buy, they show up to Together. this fourfold place, right? Doubling place, okay. It, it's connected to Mamre, which means strength or fatness. Mm. Mamre is spelled with two M's, a ration. So you, and if you look at every member, every Hebrew letter has a number. You yeah. have 40, 40. Mem could be water or a womb. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Resh is the head or authority, the beginning. Aleph is a master, a prince, or a chief. Okay, so look at this word, Mamre, at the beginning with the two M's or a doubling of the water or womb. Mm -hmm. So doubling water, two womb, uh, or, or doubling of wombs, you have the upper and lower waters, a picture of separation of soul and spirit. What's this doubling? You have the natural, you have the spiritual. Mm -hmm. You have two pictures of Messiah. You have the reigning king like a david and you have the suffering servant of joseph both are are valid they both mm -hmm. came from the womb okay the water of the word and the water of the spirit mm -hmm. are one so there's a lot of hindu things the northern and southern kingdom they're also going to be one stick yeah and un and undivided um kingdom water that surrounds the two wombs of leah and Rachel. So there's going to be a day, you know, remember a house, house divided can't stand, but a mm -hmm. house united can't fall. God's going to join the lost sheep back, the Northern and Southern kingdoms back together, right, Ephraim right. And, and, and Judah. And remember there was water around the room of Leah. There's water around it. But so, because remember the Northern kingdom comes from Leah, 
The right. southern king, excuse me, no. uh, excuse me, the, the southern kingdom comes from Leah yeah. and the northern kingdoms comes from Rachel. Mm -hmm. Two wombs, just like this place, Mamre. Is it water? Is it is it a womb? So, but there's only one head. Mm. There can only be one race, one chief and authority. Okay. So Hebron, I started studying this out just to, to see if I could find something out about Hebron. I didn't know. Of course, there is more, always more in the, when you start <laughs> that. So Hebron can be positive, negative. It can mean positively. Think about this. A seat of association. It could be a positive association. It could be a conjunction, a place of joining. Mm -hmm. Positive. You know, we need relationships. We need associations. We need joining together. But then when you dig a little deeper to the root word of Hebron, you find it could be from a society. Mm. But then it goes to like a totally twist that I never saw coming. It can mean a spell, mm -hmm. a charmer or charming, a company, an enchantment, which enchantments you have to do spells too. Why? Now, remember, the Canaanites are living there. The Hittites are living there. But Abraham, he's, this is, God given him this territory. It might have aspects of spells and witchcraft and all this kind of stuff. So you start digging out of the Lord. Kabar means to join. Mm -hmm. you, you join specifically by means of spells. There's a joining by a spell mm -hmm. to fascinate a charmer, to be compact, to couple together and have fellowship with, to heap up, to join, to self together or lead. So you might be saying, Pastor Ken, why, why would Abraham go to this Hebron? You know, we should have nothing to do with Hebron. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Don't, don't stop there. Wait a minute. It, we need to learn about Hebron because you're seeing the, the negative side of it that the enemy wants to bring right. spells and joy. So in other words, he's going to bring people together, but it's going to be by deception. It's mm -hmm. going to be by spells. It's going to be by enchantments. It's going to be, you know, those kind of things. So I dug this out even more and say, if you look in the war of kings, the kings came to a place and they joined together. I'm talking about the, all the kings, they fought at this one place. Remember, it was, it was, the, it was where the Dead Sea is. And these are the kings the, that fought the, with, the, with um, where the, Abraham came and, and rescued, rescued Lot. Lot. So yes. you've got the five okay. kings and the four kings, and they're all joined at this place. And, rem and uh, I'm going to show you this. So they're all, all nine kings are joining at one place in this Valley of Siddam, which is the Salt Sea. They're all joining there. And it is that same root word that has to do with, look at that, look, where is that? H2266, the word that has to, they're joining by spells. Yes. We yes. don't realize there's witchcraft going on. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now. the enemy was using right okay now in the, the end, end times, times yeah there's going to be nations that will be joined together we know this from the scriptures but the motivation and the root of the joining could also be charming spells mm -hmm. enchantments if you look at revelation 18 21 through 24 in it babylon says, the great men merchants and nations deceived by sorcery they're all joined together right and they're all deceived by these mm -hmm. sorcery spells so okay so can you imagine now why really the enemy didn't want abraham to have this territory no, no and then also if you yeah. understand anything about witchcraft high places you do a start studying that you'll find out that the enemy never goes to a territory unless he knows God has already put his mark there. Right. right. And so the enemy knows that this is a place. Hebron yeah. is a place that is the, the Adam and Eve were buried there. Um, the patriarchs are going to be there. And he knows that this is a holy place. This is a supernatural place. So what right. he's going to, he's going to put his twist on it. Of course. Okay. Yes. So when yes. Abraham wants to buy the Cayman field, he makes a deal with Ephon at the gate. The Hebrew mm -hmm. understanding of the gate is that the gate is the place where judges and counselors, they make decisions, they make mm -hmm. rulings. So now let's look at this story. 
And he spoke with him saying, if you are of mind to let me bury my dead from before my presence, listen to me. Plead with Ephron, son of Zephar, on my behalf, that he may give me the cave of Machpelah that belongs to him, that is at the end of his field, at the full price, let him give it to me in your midst for a gravesite. Now Ephron was sitting in the midst of the sons of Heth, and Ephron the Hittite answered Abraham in the ears of the sons of Heth, all those who enter the gate of his city, saying, no, my Lord, listen to me. The field I hereby give it to you. Also the cave that is in it, I hereby give it to you. In the eyes of the sons of my people, I hereby give it to you. Bury your dead one. Then Abraham bowed down before the people of the land and spoke to Ephron on the ears of the people of the land, saying, but if only you would please listen to me, I hereby give the price of the field, accept it from me, that I may bury my dead one there. So Ephron answered Abraham, saying to him, my Lord, listen to me, a land worth 400 shekels of silver. What is that between me and you? Bury your dead one. Abraham heard Ephron. So Abraham weighed out to Ephron the silver that he had spoken of the ears of the sons of Beth, 400 shekels of silver at the merchant's rate. Now Ephron's field that is in Machpelah, next to Mamre, the fields and the cave that is in it, and all the trees that are on the fields and all its surrounding territory was handed over to Abraham as a purchased possession in the eyes of the sons of Heth before all those who entered the gate of his city. So I, I probably can't prove it, but I believe that mm -hmm. Ephron was trying to do some of that enchantment yeah. against Abraham. He said, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give it to you. It was a ruse. He would have never gave it. Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what do we know about Ephron? Ephron's the son of Zohar. And Zohar means to dazzle you. Mm-hmm sheen it's all that whiteness what it's a it's a it looks it looks sparkly right, it looks right. good right so remember all the decisions are made at the gate okay um including purchases of property so this was you saw abraham spoke and it was at the gate so the people could hear so remember also when rebecca is blessed by her family before she's home before she leaves she's yeah. blessed with this blessing about the gate yeah, and they blessed Rebecca and said to her, our sister, may you become thousands of ten thousands and may your seed possess the gate of those who hate him. So where is something fishy going to happen sometimes? At the gate. At the gate. But when you have a righteous person there, mm -hmm. Abraham, last week, Lot was sitting at the gate. We have this promise. You and I have this promise. We're mm -hmm. the seed. We're, we're part of the seed. Yeah. We're going to possess, possess the gate. The gate. So even though Ephron, he tried to do something, you know, fishy at the gate, Abraham said, no. And, and the word gate means to split or to be open. It's a, it's a, play, okay. It's a gatekeeper to estimate, to think, to calculate, to reckon, mm -hmm. to cleave or divide, to set a price. So it's a, so Ephron is named in this Torah portion to, his name means farm life. But if you break out his name, part the first part of his name, mm -hmm. the ayin means I. The the pay is a mouth. The resh is a head. The vuv is a connector. The vuv is multiplication. So that's maybe telling us a little bit about his name. Mm -hmm. Nine, and he's the son of Heth. Nine times the children of Heth is mentioned, and their name means fear or terror. Mm -hmm. These are not nice guys. Heth and Hittite have the same meaning right. in the Hebrew and Heth. To prostrate, to break you down by violence, confusion. I mean, to beat mm -hmm. you down, to scare you, to terrify mm -hmm. you. This is who Abraham's dealing with. Right, right. These are not nice people. Right. So, and he knew that that's why he said to the leaders yeah. to help him, to talk to him. And then he had to get the rest of the people. So yes. there would be no deception. Right. Now. Right. Um, but they probably were in on it. But they Abraham outsmarted him. Yeah, basically. Because he possessed the gates of his enemies. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. So uh, the firstborn of the first mention of the word half as is as a firstborn. So Genesis 10, 15. Canaan fathered Sidon, his firstborn, Heth. Now the Canaanite border was from Zidon as you go toward Gerar, as far as Gaza, as you go toward Sodom and Gomorrah, Adama and Zebion, as far as Lasha. So this is the first mention mm -hmm. of Heth and um, Canaan. And Canaan fathered Zidon. His firstborn, Heth. Yeah. Now the Canaanite border was from Zidon. It's kind of weird because Zidon is both the exact same mm -hmm. word and one's a city and one's a person. Mm -hmm. So Heth is connected to the Canaanites. You got it. And Heth is connected to the four cities that were destroyed in God's judgment. So 
Yeah. Remember, there's there's four kings and five kings in the that that battle. Mm -hmm. The five kings rebel against paying the four kings, the spe specifically Shedale Homer, and four of these kingdoms are mentioned here. Right. Sodom, Gomorrah, Adma, and these are actually the four kingdom, the four kingdoms that end up being destroyed right. in the by the sulfur in the judgment of God. So there's something to that, yeah. but I'm not going to dig that out tonight. It's just too much. But mm -hmm. I but there's some there's so you have all these these evil connections. Sidon, remember Sidon. Sidon is a firstborn. Sidon is going toward Gerar, mm -hmm. interesting as far as Gaza. Gaza. Okay. Yeah. Zidon, what is what does Zidon mean? It means to fish or to catch. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's it's not it, they're it's not nice. Not, no, no. Now let's move on to uh, Abraham's story. Abraham's servant going to find a lot, uh, find a, a wife, a wife Isaac. for Isaac. So in the story, the servant is he's a sent one. In the Hebrew, it's called the shaliak. It's it's if you translate to the to, to the Greek, a shaliak in Hebrew is equal to what we would call an apostle today. Mm -hmm. He's being sent by Abraham. Yeah. He's carrying Abraham's authority. And he has to actually cross over back. And so remember, Abraham's a, Abraham's a crossover one. He's a Hebrew. But now, for some reason, yes, in order to bring the wife, he has to go back. He has to cross back mm -hmm. to back to Aram, back to that Mesopotamia, back to, you know, Syria area. Okay, so in his mission, this is so strange. But maybe it's not. The servant is never named. So in other words, it never says the servant's name. We know that the servant is Eliezer. We know right. he's a master steward. But in this story, it just says Abraham's servant. Abraham's servant. And it's like, wow, what's Moses called? A servant. A servant. What yeah. you know? What's really the highest title? Is a what, servant. You know, what yeah. is Yeshua called? A, a ser servant. I, yeah. it, so it's just interesting, right? You you don't need. And now think about this. Since he's he's not named, maybe it's because he doesn't need to be named because mm. he, like Abraham, never builds his own name. No. Mm -mm. So he's a steward. Mm. Means he holds the possessions. He, he I mean he is trusted. He is holding in yeah. his hand literally yeah. the title deed to everything Abraham has. Yeah. Eliezer, we know it's his name, it means the God of help. Mm. He's from Damascus. Okay. He takes a portion of Abraham's great wealth to give to this future bride and his family. Two times, mm -hmm. you saw this, Abraham instructs the servant that Isaac cannot leave, leave the, the land. land. Genesis 24, 6, not my son, thither again. Genesis 24, 8, only bring not my son thither again. I mean, you, it's exact language, exact right. Hebrew words. You cannot bring Isaac. The understanding is because Isaac was offered as an Ola offering to God, and mm -hmm. he was also born in the land, that he um, was never to leave the land. He right. was like, he was like holy unto God, if you will. It's like, he, like, this is his land, and he cannot. It, it, there's something to it. We don't understand, but, you know, it's interesting. You look at Mm, um, I'm thinking of something yeah, here. Uh, uh, he can't leave the land, and that's why when there was a famine in the land, says, God go. said, I was thinking cannot, the same thing. I was thinking, cannot this, go to Egypt. He could Egypt. not leave the land. So because Israel. Abraham goes to Egypt, and yeah. then his son Jacob goes to Egypt, but Isaac, Isaac could not. Yeah, it's very interesting him. that he can't. Leave. And there might be something prophetic yeah. about this. You can't leave the yeah, land. You can't leave the land. Yeah. I, I, we have to dig it out a little bit more. So prophetically, by the spirit and the leading of the angel, he comes to this appointed place, a fountain, where an unknown family member is approaching. Mm. He asked God for a sign of favor. You know, there's a scripture in that psalm says, Lord, show me a sign of favor that those yeah. will, those who hate me will see that you're with me. Yeah. And, I, and I think he was doing that. You know, God, give him, give him a sign favor. of favor. Yeah. And Rebecca's going to fulfill with haste, she's going to hurry up and go speedily to do what he what he had prayed. Just which was water. Don't just give me water. Water my camels too. Yeah. So just like Lot and Abraham, they would did everything really quick when the angel showed up. Now Rebecca, Rebecca is showing she doesn't fit Laban's house. No. She's she's like Abraham. 
Yeah. She, and that's why she's going to be the perfect wife. Yeah. Um, and plus she's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. This, this is like every patriarch. It always says patriarch wives are always Thank beautiful. You. I mean, Sarah's so beautiful at nine years old. She's taken, you know, twice. Okay. Not, not knowing who she is. Mm -hmm. He gives her tokens of blessings that represent the covenant and Torah. And it came to pass as the camels had done drinking that the man took a golden earring of half a shekel weight and two bracelets for her hand of 10 shekels weight of gold. So he doesn't know this is the appointed one. Right. But because of her service, he gives her a gold earring. The gold earring represents Israel when they said, we, we will, will what? We, we will, will hear. hear. When they spoke in Hallelujah. one accord, they received the covenant relationship at Sinai. What are the two bracelets? Listen, in, in a sense... The bracelets yeah. are, we will do. Mm -hmm. See, the ears, we will hear. The bracelets go in your hands. We, we will, will do. do. They represent the two tablets because the two bracelets, they both weigh, they weigh 10, when it says 10 shekels. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the two bracelets with 10 represented the two tablets with five and five, the 10 yeah. commandments, a half shekel offering. Um, and then it talks about, the half shekel somewhere it talks about it. I don't know where, but anyway, so you, we don't have to go through all this, but just to understand that prophetically he's tying her to covenant. Yeah. He's, he's tying, tying her yeah. to the commandments to the, mm -hmm. he might not even realize it, right. but I believe the Holy spirit was leading him to say, okay, make sure she understands you got to hear and it's gold. You make sure you, what, it's what you do. Yeah. You know, it's it's original golden handcuffs, if you will. Okay, so even though Laban's name means to make white or pure, he himself is crooked. Yeah, and he spots a business opportunity. It's a pun because he basically is spotted. He's not pure. You know, he, the servant recognizes what Laban's doing, and by the spirit, he fulfills yeah. the mission. He brings Rebecca back on one of the camels. Really, God gave this man. Yeah. Supernatural favor. Because yes. you're not, he's dealing with people. Yeah. Yeah. Someone who who was out for wealth. Right. So look in Genesis 24. Then the servant brought out articles of silver and gold and garments and gave them to Rebecca. He also gave precious gifts to her brothers and to her mother. Then they ate and drank, and he and the men were with him and sent, spent the night. When they arose in the morning, he said, Send me off to my master. But her brother, with her mother said, let the young woman stay with us a few days or 10. Afterwards, she may go. Okay, so and this is a very weird statement, okay? He, uh, okay, yeah. I'm sorry. But he said to them, don't delay me. Since Adonai has made my way successful, send me off so that I can go to my master. So they said, we'll call the young woman and let's ask her opinion. Then they called Rebecca and said to her, Will you go with this man? And she said, I will go. Okay. Okay. So 10 days is mm. mentioned. Mm, One, it's a delay. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. That word number 10. But in this case, the mission would not be delayed by right. the 10. Mm -hmm. The bride's going to leave and cleave to Isaac. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's look at that. Remember 10 could mean testing. Right. It could be a legal congregation, but in this case, Laban was probably trying to pull a fast one. Yeah. And no, where there's no delay. And we, yeah. you know, I, I, I think that's a, that's a good point. Yeah. Maybe. When the Holy, well, he's, you know, when the Holy Spirit's showing you something, you don't want to delay, you want to act on it because. And there was no reason for the no, 10 days right. other than maybe they say he was actually wanting to get more, more out of it. More money. Yeah. yeah exactly. More for a dowry. Yeah. yeah. Right. Now, Isaac had come from visiting Ber Laharoi and was living in the land of the Negev. Isaac went out to meditate, strolling in the field at dusk. And then he lifted up his eyes and saw behold, camels were coming. Rebecca also lifted up her eyes and saw Isaac. Then she fell off her camel. Then she said to the servant, who is that man there who was walking in the field to meet us? And the servant said, he is my master. So she took the veil and covered herself. Then the servant recounted to Isaac all the things that he had done. Okay, I think there's one more. Then Isaac brought her into the tent of Sarah, his mother, and took Rebecca, and she became his wife. He loved her. So Isaac was comforted after the loss of his mother. So you can see that once she gets there, he what does he do? He loves her. 
Yeah. And then he's comforted. And I think yeah. we need to see the and Jew, Jewish understanding is they had the marriage. Yeah. And you can see he, what does he do? He loves her. And by that love for her, he gets comfort. Now think about the word comfort. What do we know in the New Testament about the Holy Spirit? Yeah, he's the comforter. He's the comfort. So this is already telling you yeah. about the work of the Holy Spirit. Yes. The work of love mm -hmm. um, in their relationship, in their marriage, um, and the honoring of Sarah by bringing her into that tent, which means that she had the spirit of Sarah. Right. You know? Exactly. Okay. So I want to just throw this out at you tonight because I want you to just remind you mm -hmm. of um, about marriage and also are being married to the Lord mm -hmm. because tying in with that, he loved her. Yeah. It doesn't say she loved him. It says right. he loved her. And yeah. then he loved her. She, he was comforted. Right. Okay. Ephesians 5 25 husbands love your wives. Just as Messiah also loved this community and gave himself up for her to make her holy, having cleansed her by immersion in the word. Messiah did this so that he might present to himself a glorious community not having stain or wrinkle or any such thing, but in order that she might be holy and blameless. In the same way, husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Messiah also does his community. So mm -hmm. how many times does it say, husbands, yeah. love your wives? Husbands, love your If you love your wife, mm -hmm. you love yourself. Right. And... And Messiah loved, yes. he gave himself for his bride. He, yeah. just the way Isaac loves Rebecca is the way Messiah loves, loves you know? And I just think we need to get back to that, mm. uh, that kind of marriage relationship where we, because it, it, you love your wife as, your, as your if, own. You if you love you yourself, you love your wife. Right. You know, and the Messiah, he nourishes, he cherishes. And I think Isaac was, he lived like that. Yeah. He lived yeah. like that. And I think we, we need to get back. I think that's all I have on the, um, uh, on that part. Yeah. Tonight. Let me just see. Okay. What, what really, um, I wanted to bring something out about that when Rebecca sees him, remember where Isaac is at, he's at the place where, where it means God sees. So when Rebecca sees Isaac, she stops and says, who is the man, right? Who is that coming? Who is that? And then the servant explains to her who it is. And then she covers herself. And I, you know, the bride of Christ, I was thinking like, as we're talking about, you know, we are the bride of Christ. And when the Lord, you know, when he comes, we have to be covered mm. with a garment, yeah, the veil. with a veil, yeah, yeah, without a garment, yeah, without yeah, spot, yeah. without wrinkle. And that's exactly what Rebecca was doing. That veil represents that covering yes. of when our Messiah comes, that we will be wearing the, the right, the right thing. Hallelujah. I love it. I think that's, uh, that, that's powerful. There, there's so much more to that because she falls off her camel. The understanding yeah. is he's basically... He had just come from being in the spirit. Yes. He, he, this, this word that, that yes. he's, he's meditating the field. It goes back to the garden of Eden. It's a, it's, he's connected with God, but yeah. she's basically seeing the, it's almost like she's seeing the glory. She's seeing the he, glory. He came from another realm. Yes. Remember he's all this area has somehow is tied to the garden of Eden. Yes. Yes. It's encounters with God. Uh, there's right. wells, there's, 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 yeah. there's God seeing there's and, and, and you see like how nonchalant they talk about angels, like, Oh, yeah. the angel's going to do this. And you know, the angel, it's like angels are like their buddies or something. Well, that's what exactly. I love that. What that's what Abraham said to the servant. He said, don't worry about it. Yeah. Adonai will send the angel. He'll go before you. And I think we forget that we have that also that in Hebrews, it says, do you not know that you have ministering, yeah. you're, you, have, you have angels that are ministering spirits, you know? So they're sent to help. They're sent to help yeah. us. What are we sweating? We need yeah. to stop <laughs> worrying and just trust when God gives us, gives an assignment we need to trust that he will send the angels before us. Yeah. And, and, Hallelujah. And Give us favor. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I'm, I'm going to stop the recording and then um, 